We are continuing our coverage on the influx of migrants landing in Florida. This past weekend, more than 300 migrants arrived at Dry Tortugas National Park, leading to the park's closure. As of Wednesday afternoon, it is still closed, according to the National Park Service website. And on Monday, crews aboard two cruise ships rescued migrants at sea. A passenger on the Celebrity Beyond sharing these photos of 19 migrants in a crowded boat you see there. They were brought on board the cruise and given food, water, and a medical leave evaluation and another rescue on the carnival celebration where five migrants were brought on board from their boat about 30 miles northwest of Cuba. Carnival tells us they met with Coast Guard officials near Key West who took the migrants into custody. According to a recent report by U.S. Customs and Border Patrol, the number of migrant arrivals in South Florida this time of year are up five times what they were last year. The strain is felt not only on the migrants themselves, but the local communities they land on. While the sheriff in the Florida Keys has declined interviews this week, reporter Sophia Hernandez sat down with Monroe County Sheriff Rick Ramsey last month. In this series, of story, Sophia shares why the sheriff believes this is a mass migration and why landings this week show it's not slowing down. Since 2021, the Florida Keys has seen a more than 600% increase in migrant landings. That's according to Monroe County's Sheriff Rick Ramsey. And we're experiencing now, we're averaging about three landings a day right now. Ramsey has been sheriff since 2012. This week, he has declined interviews regarding the migrant spike, but he did speak to me one month ago in this interview. He said then that what his stretch of over 220 miles of land has experienced this last year is what he has coined as a mass migration, the majority of people coming from Cuba and Haiti. We're talking the hundreds. We actually had Coast Guard intercept a, sa a Haitian sail freighter yesterday inbound for the Keys that had 468 Haitians on board and six animals. Ramsey says the migrants arriving within this last year are at sea anywhere from three to 10 days. And when they land, he along with local fire rescue and police are met with challenges. First and foremost, their health and well-being. We're dealing with uh, medical emergencies and these are minor to severe to loss of life at sea. Ramsey says while some migrants sit and wait for assistance, others run off. So our 9-11 dispatch center gets inundated with 9-11 calls about persons that are running through people's yards. And we have to respond to most of these calls, not sure if it's really a migrant or if it's a, another crime or what's going place. And the strain on resources doesn't stop there. Keys officials have to figure out what to do with all of the vessels left on the shoreline. It's very difficult because you have to have a salvage crew come out. You've got to salvage a boat, maybe get a crane, maybe crane it out. On land, you've got to get a crane out of the water onto a trailer. You've got to bring it somewhere. It's got to be environmentally clean because, again, oil and diesel fuels. So it's got to be clean before it can be destroyed. So even a small little chug could cost just thousands and thousands of dollars to destroy. In his interview from a month ago, Ramsey says what's been the biggest hurdle is manpower to assist. Lots of waiting games where we got to sit and wait for the government to will come up with transportation. They don't have viable transportation for a large amounts of people that come in. So the transportation has to come in from Miami-Dade County. So by the time we got the landing, you figure how many people, you contact the government, you tell them what you got. Then they have to work with their transportation, get someone on call, someone to get the bus, get the bus down here. You know, these things take potentially hours. And during most of this time, I have to have officers with these uh, individuals for hours at a time. Since the new year, the number of migrant landings has only continued to rise. According to Chief Agent Walter Slozar with Miami's Division of Border Patrol, on December 31st, within a 24-hour span, there were five migrant landings with 88 Cuban migrants. By the next day, 160 migrants were encountered after 10 landings made it to the Florida Keys' shore. According to a press release sent by Sheriff Ramsey this week, as of Tuesday, more than 160 refugees landed in the Central Keys, more than 300 near the Dry Tortugas, ultimately closing the National Park. Sheriff Ramsey, in our previous interview from one month ago, said then that while he has reached out to federal officials for assistance, he has been met with no help. We only have a few Border Patrol agents, and generally, uh, you know, let's say nighttime, there may only be one agent on. So I'm dealing with one person who may be responsible for 300 migrants who hit the shoreline.
However, the Southeast chapter of Homeland Security shared a tweet Tuesday saying they were aware of the landings and have offered additional personnel. On Wednesday, they shared the U.S. Coast Guard removed 90 migrants and that both agencies have been providing food and shelter to stranded migrants until they are transferred to Border Patrol custody in Key West. Now, according to Miami CBP's tweet, in the past five days, they have reported stopping 26 smuggling events with almost 600 migrants. Compared to this time last year, they have seen a 400% increase in the number of migrant encounters. A month ago, Ramsey shared he has been relying heavily on state agencies, mainly FHP and FWC. The sheriff said it helps some, but he believes our nation's government can do more and hopes they do. As more migrants land on his shores each day, he predicts the number of migrant landings to triple into the new year. So it'd be easy just to say, not my job, but, you know, we just have to, we got to suck it up and, and do what we have to do, Sophia. Sophia Hernandez, Florida 24 Network.